okay so dar uh, when we are manufacturing uh, like something like let's say uh, an equipment so dar uh, cost coming with it so that we can divide this cost uh, in general it can be manufacturing like equipment or uh, manufacturing of uh, uh, manufacturing the, 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 the process itself the company itself the factory itself so uh, there are uh, okay there are many different costs uh, we have direct costs that vary with uh, production rate okay so um, but it's not but it's not necessarily proportional we have direct direct cost uh, that really vary with production rate if you have a higher production rate your direct cost will be higher but they are not proportional or it uh, i mean they are not like linear uh, linearly uh, uh, proportional okay or you know like we they are not really a certain function between these two then we have a fixed cost uh, fixed cost uh, dar, uh, dar, they don't change with the production rate or some fixed costs it can be let's say uh, uh, the taxes the insurances the construction costs okay let's say the offices that you need to build so the offices they are they don't usually um, uh, depends to the to the production rate let's say if you need one manager for uh, let's say uh, one section one division so that 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 is not really depend to the production rate. so things that they don't vary with production rate the, okay they don't uh, vary with the production rate but they are directly okay uh, relate to the production okay they are directly related to the production but they don't vary really with production rate. and general expenses is uh, is really related to uh, overhead expenses you know like some um, is, is kind of uh, related to the to the operation mainly okay direct cost for the manufacturing uh, it can be raw material waste treatment utilities that we have operating labors uh, su supervisory and clerical labor okay the management and uh, maintenance and repairs operating supplies uh, lab laboratory charges so most of the time we have labs that we test the quality of products and also royalty and patents okay so if you let's say if you are producing a product okay for yours for is either a first time or um, is either is a first time or there is a product already being produced by another company and you want to produce that product let's say iphone is already there you want to produce something similar to iphone so you have to pay for the intellectual property or the patent because iphone or any product they are already registered as a patent as an innovation as a uh, intellectual property if you want to use it if you want to produce similar to things you have to pay the right to to produce that product then we have fixed cost okay fixed cost are uh, one of the most important fixed costs is the depreciation of the fixed capital cost. Okay, it's okay. Fixed cost. Okay, depreciation of the all fixed capital cost. So let's say you 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 buy some cars, you buy some equipments, you buy some trucks for your factory. The cars, the price of the car depreciate or drop okay the price of the truck that you have to to transport your your uh, your products your raw material they will that will drop right because like the price of the new car new truck uh, after using every year will drop like a normal normal car so those are the f the costs that you have that we call them fixed costs local tax and insurance you have to always pay 
uh, are also called fixed costs. Planned overhead costs. So we might have some overhead uh, costs that uh, we have to pay. So those are the fixed costs. Overhead can be, as I said, can be vacations for the employees that you have to pay, retirement plans, uh, benefits that the employees uh, employ, uh, employees they, uh, they, they have. So those are all considered as fixed costs. Okay, now, uh, okay, like in this part of the course, you might see a lot of definitions, okay, but I try to kind of um, organize them, okay, and tell them one by one so that it doesn't make you get make you confused. But again, since it's a new topic, it's normal, and then we are teaching online, and that might be a bit. Uh, kind of challenging for you to understand all of them but again there are a lot of uh, I mean I, I try to explain as much as I can however there are a lot of information available on internet if you don't if you really need more in more details uh, about uh, this definitions you can search about them there are YouTube videos and also uh, and also what I have done in the notes here in some slide I put some additional information for you in this part so you can just go uh, check, check those information as well so not all the sites necessarily but some of them they have some additional um, uh, additional definition here okay then so uh, okay total capital investment the total investment that we need to put for a factory it has three parts fixed capital okay land and working capital working capital is a cap is a money that you need to put to start the process okay so we have fixed capital investment buying the land and working capital fixed capital for equipment utility offices uh, you know all those all those uh, 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 expenses that you have at the beginning okay then uh, we have okay uh, land that you have to buy and working capital the money that you have to put at the beginning to start the the production okay each of them they have a definition fixed capital is all costs associated with new construction that can depreciate okay so all the costs the costs that you have okay all the costs that you have and uh, uh, that they can also depreciate let's say the car trucks equipment whatever land uh, lands you have to purchase so is a capital investment for is an investment you have to put is is considered as in the total capital investment but lands they usually don't depreciate let's say if you buy a land today most of the time the the price of the land either is constant or it doesn't depreciate okay it will increase maybe short time in some countries the land the price of the land will decrease you know like due to some economical issues but long term the price of the lands always increase okay so it doesn't depreciate or it doesn't drop working capital float of material to start the operation and they, are, they, they usually cannot get uh, depreciated so float of materials let's say uh, you need to buy computers you need to buy i don't know like um, some stationaries for the office you need to uh, buy some office stuff you know those are the material that usually are consumable and they don't depreciate or even if they depreciate the the, the depreciation is not too much so at, so we can write this equation in another way okay so if we write it in abbreviation so we will have this total capital investment is to the fixed capital cost that we have fixed uh, fixed cost investment or fixed capital investment okay plus land plus working capital fixed capital investment we're gonna go through the detail of each of them in the next few uh, slides okay now we need to know some of the definitions here okay uh, okay so uh, 
uh, first one is uh, First one is salvage value. Salvage value is the value of your fixed capital investment at the end of the project. Let's say at the end of the life of your plant, at the end of the life of, let's say you, 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 you build the factory and the, the life of the plant based on the estimation is 15 years. Let's say if you keep the plant working like that, so it can work for you. Uh, for 15 years okay so at the end of the 15 years let's say the equipment that you have okay the, the heat exchangers i don't know the compressors after 15 years if you want to know how much they cost because you buy the compressor at the beginning ten thousand dollar but after 15 years maybe it doesn't even worth five hundred dollar because it's already work a lot you know this it's already work all this 15 years so it doesn't really cost a lot if you ask someone to buy it from you he might not be really interested to pay for that so that so salvage value that we showed with s is the value of the fixed capital investment fixed capital investment is the equipment that you need to you know buy most of the time is this kind of things at the end of the project that we usually consider zero life of equipment okay so life of equipment uh, we usually show it with number of years okay n and for different equipments we have different uh, uh, we have different uh, for different equipments we have different uh, num i mean life life of equipment so those are numbers that will be po that is provided by irs or they call it also us uh, internal revenue service okay us internal revenue service they can provide us with the list of the life of different type of equipment that is used in the industries this life of equipment is not really uh, related to the actual equipment life actual equipment life is something let's say if you buy a car uh, i don't know like a Toyota car they usually uh, they are saying that the work the life of that uh, car is 20 years okay but this 20 years depending to the condition can change if you use that car all the time off-road uh, and if you use it you know like all the day so like uh, that is um, so that that the car might not even work 10 years right so that life of equipment is based on some specific conditions so that's why most of the time we say that the the, the car the twitter cars they can either work 20 years or let's say after 400,000 kilometer right so whatever arrives first it will be you know like i mean the car is is already gone so that's why like this number of years that we say it includes all these factors how much the car has gone you know for how many years it has worked so it's a bit different from the actual life equipment total capital uh, for uh, depreciation okay so is usually mm, is usually also related to the total capital okay that uh, i mean is is also considered when we are calculating the total capital for the for depreciation the part of the capital that will depreciate we also consider the life of equipment the reason is that the equipments once they get closer to their life uh, i mean life cycle to the to their end of their life so the price will depreciate and for that okay so is kind of um, how we can find it or like calculate it we can use the difference between the fixed capital investment and the salvage value okay that the salvage value is usually zero so for calculating this we usually use this difference the fixed into capital investment that you put minus the value of the minus the value of the process of the value of the investment at the end of the project so this difference is how much money you will use this is the money that you will put at the beginning this is the money that you will put at the uh, you will get at the end from this investment 
okay if this is the let's say the money that you put to buy a new car this is the money that you will get once you sell your car after 10 years all right so this difference is how much money you have lost then divided by number of years it can give you some idea how much money you will lose every year so then uh, for the depreciation uh, we have yearly depreciation it varies from year to year so like the as I said for yearly depreciation the maybe the easiest way is to kind of uh, divide this let's say if your project uh, okay the, your fixed capital investment this is your fixed capital investment minus salvage value this is the money that you put at the end minus the money that you will uh, get at the at the end divided let's say you had a project that was working 10 years so this gives you this difference is how much money you lost how much money was depreciated okay divided by 10 years gives you the money that you lost per each year okay this is the simplest equation that you can uh, you can use that is when we consider that the the money that we lose each year is is the same but usually the yearly depreciation change from year to year this year the month the, the equipment will lose let's say more value than next year let's say if you buy a new car once you get it out from the showroom the car lose a lot of his uh, his price right so let's say the first year you lose a lot of money because you already bought a new car but the second year the money the money that you lose is not that much it's something like that book value okay book value is a depreci depreciable capital which is not uh, used yet okay book value again is uh, the asset is kind of the asset that you have okay let's say uh, you have uh, I will explain this a little bit more uh, later in this uh, slide is the money that you have uh, that is not yet depreciated let's say you have uh, some raw material that you have not yet used or you have some new equipment new cars that you have not yet used them okay so that's the money that you put you bought them but you have not yet used so they have still uh, their uh, their value okay but it's not yet depreciated because they are new you haven't used them okay general expenses uh, that is another expenses that we have in the process so it can be uh, administration cost it can be uh, selling distribution marketing and also research and development that they usually call it r and d so we have uh, we have uh, if direct cost fixed cost and general expenses right so general expenses administration um, marketing distribution uh, selling and also research and development which is most of the time a very critical part of the company if the company wants to survive for a long time uh, long term we this this part this division research and development has to be very active okay for manufacturing cost how we find the manufacturing cost there are tables okay for that uh, again uh, I'm just gonna show them uh, that uh, I mean like in the next uh, few slides you will see them there are some uh, slides that shows uh, what is the manufacturing I mean like the manufacturing cost include which items okay each items that that we have in manufacturing manufacturing is we have let's say we, when we want to build the i mean fabricate the heat exchanger we need material we need labor we need testing we need inspection we need engineering work we need design that is done by some engineer we need a, a technician to fabricate it we have to pay for him we have we need in, in installation uh, operation so those are all the costs that comes with uh, manufacturing so like that table 61 will uh, describe them and also table 62 will show uh, the factors that correspond to each of the item 
okay that let's say for the labor we have a factor you already saw them or similar you already saw similar to them uh, alpha alpha something you know but here we also go a bit more details about them and uh, as i said this these tables are not very important you just need to know you have the general idea about them then uh, okay we relate the relationship between the items okay so uh, let's say for for labor we are saying we will say that labor will be usually labor cost will be let's say 20 percent of the price of the heat exchanger price of heat exchanger the cost of heat exchanger i don't know like engineering work is 10 percent of the pro the cost of the heat exchanger it's something like that these two tables they all explain this kind of uh, relation that we have right so we relate the relationship between item in table 6 1 I will show you in the next slide to the direct cost okay that direct cost which is RM that is for uh, raw material raw material then okay yeah there are like items like a b c d okay so the a okay so like a is direct is direct cost uh, that that has this item a b and c what is the direct cost raw material waste treatment w e waste waste treatment waste treatment UT is for utility utilities OL is operating labor operating labor and FCI which is your fixed capital investment fixed capital investment okay so those are like in the table we relate all this item to each other okay the direct cost and with different items to the fixed capital investment FCI okay there is one slide I think is uh, is hidden here if I'm not uh, okay there was one slide okay so there is one slide one example that I will show you later okay so uh, yeah it's after the table so those are the tables that we have factor affecting the manufacturing cost we also show it cost of manufacturing or manufacturing cost com cost of manufacturing okay so we have as i said we have those are all we already talked about. we have direct cost that comes that has raw material waste treatment utility operating labor direct supervisory and kind of engineering work we show it with e okay so you have all the description here maintenance and repair okay operating supplies laboratory charges pattern and loyalty those are all in direct cost so let's say when i have when i want to manufacture something let's say heat exchanger the cost of manufacture has all this item raw material if i'm producing a waste waste treatment i don't know utilities all this so like direct direct cost we have also fixed cost let's say uh, when we install this uh, heat exchanger in the process how much uh, we will really lose per year okay for that heat exchanger the local cost that we have to put so we, most of the time we we calculate the total uh, cost of the manufacturing okay not item by item we have some equations that has all the equipments all the items all together so the cost of manufacturing we usually don't go one by one by equipment we can we calculate the total cost of let's say the equipments that we have and then we use some factors that you will see in table 6 2 that can that relates all this together so how much uh, tax you have to pay if your cost of manufacturing for the factory is that much how much low local insurance you have to pay the overhead expenses that you have and this is your fixed 
cost and also you have general cost as I said administration stuff uh, distribution selling and also R and D so table 6 to uh, show all this cost with uh, with some uh, I mean it's with some factors with some uh, uh, let's say uh, with some parameters right so you have your direct cost first one you have your fixed cost second one and also general cost so how we do how we do calculate them so uh, raw material we show it the factor the cost of raw material crm cost of wastewater cwt cost of utility cut then you have operating labor okay cost of operating labor after that you have supervisory and clerical labor let's say you have uh, for each 10 labor each 10 workers okay each 10 workers you need one supervisor so for each labor you each 10 labor each 10 worker you need one supervisor right so that so your many your supervisory costs kind of relate to the to the operating labor the, the amount of labor that you have so it's usually let's say 10 percent to 20 percent of the operating labor that you have okay i hope this explanation is more uh, is a bit is clear and um, okay so this is uh, i mean how the, are the costs are related to each other so the are, maintenance and repair so the maintenance and repair cost is related to the fixed capital investment the, how much money you are putting at the beginning so uh, your maintenance cost is a function of that it's been between two to ten percent of the fixed capital cost we usually use like something between them this is a typical value typical numbers that we use in in calculation operating supplies uh, okay so operating supply is also has is a function of uh, okay line one uh, fix okay uh, mm -hmm. so yeah operating supply is also a function of fixed capital investment laboratory charge again is a function of operating labor so we use okay so and then continue and patent loyalty so the patent let's say if you want to build the heat exchanger that is already made by a company x so if you want to build the same uh, heat exchanger as i said if you want to fabricate the iphone you have to pay to 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 apple okay so you have to pay for the patent for the intellectual property that's that that patent cost is a is a function of the cost of manufacturing let's say if you are manufacturing an iphone you have to pay let's say between zero to six percent of the uh, of the manufacturing uh, of of the, uh, you have to pay uh, about six up to six percent for the manufacturing of the manufacturing cost for the patent and most of the time why there is zero here because most of the time the patents they will be expired after 10 years 20 years let's say after 10 or 20 years if you want to fabricate an iphone maybe you don't have to pay the the cost the, the loyalty or the intellectual property cost to the to the apple so this is that's why like most of the time uh, you know after many years the pat the patents they have a life cycle after many years they get expired and you don't have to really pay anything to the manufacturer okay so a typical value is this and then total direct cost is the sum of all the costs that you have raw material waste treatment utility labor cost of man ma manufacturing and uh, also the uh, the maintenance I mean the maintenance operating labors and all these items so we have the same thing for uh, fixed okay, manufacturing cost that you have okay so depreciation usually is 10 percent of the uh, the uh, fixed investment fixed fixed cost of uh, capital investment local tax it can change from let's say one to five percent is is all related to 
fixed capital investment planned overhead expense it has it's also is a function of operating labor and fixed in capital investment then you have to sum all this item that then you will get here and also you have to consider uh, the, uh, any other depreciation that you will have and finally general cost administration cost which is a function of uh, operating labor and fixed capital investment distribution and selling is related to cost of manufacturing and also research and development which is about 5% of cost of manufacturing so you sum all together so you will find the total cost of the project that can be calculated from total cost of the manufacturing that can be calculated by this equation that has all the items the raw material waste treatment utility labor and so on so this is a kind of general equation that we will use to find the cost of manufacturing for our process okay okay this is one example like okay we already saw them um, for example maintenance and repair as i said is between two to ten percent of fixed capital investment why if you need a bigger plant you need i mean like it's about ten percent up to ten percent so if the size of the plant increase if your fixed in capital investment increase the maintenance will also increase supervisory as i said is related to the cost of operating labor cost of operating labor so um, i gave you one example for each labor you need let's say one uh, one manager one uh, supervisor right so those are how uh, those are uh, the how the costs are uh, are related to each other Proportional to operating. Um, okay. Yeah. So, like, uh, okay some other costs that are uh, oper uh, proportional to operating costs so is uh, op operating labs uh, la operating labor so that they can depreciate and also they are all the time they are a function of fixed capital uh, investment okay as you see fixed capital investment then uh, okay some other uh, okay some additional information about the cost of uh, many manufacturing uh, what we have okay we already talked about this okay cost of uh, manufacturing then as i as you see is a function of cost of manufacturing the total cost of manufacturing it's a function of all these parameters right so we can determine the cost of manufacturing when we know all this item so here i just go briefly uh, to each of them okay so uh, is a function of fixed capital investment the cost of manufacturing so we need to know all these things so in uh, we have uh, two two uh, parameter here for fixed capital investment one of them is uh, ctm mm -hmm. so this is that we call it the total okay total module cost total module cost and also we have another one which is uh, which is grass 
roots uh, G C G R which is grass roots cost okay grass root cost and okay fixed capital investment uh, it can be determined by using total module cost or the CTM total module cost there are some modules that we use as, as you already saw in the previous parts or to, or grass roots cost okay CGR grass root cost uh, so total module cost we usually use the information from uh, exist, existing plant and for grass root we usually use the information for, for we use the information for the new plant for the new site everything for the new project then we need cost of many operating labor col cost of utility we need to know cost for wastewater treatment and cost of raw material when we know all of them we put in this equation and we can find the cost of manufacturing okay so here i think uh, yes okay so here uh, what it does uh, is very i mean straightforward uh, that we have okay just give me one second i have to check something here first before we continue So this equation is not uh, something very complicated. Okay. Okay. So uh uh, okay, so like what you saw here in this part, okay, what we what we saw in this part, uh, okay, so in this slide, what you see uh, in this three parts, so those are taken from here, okay, for direct cost, direct manufacturing cost, total fix. Uh, fixed direct manufacturing cost, fixed manufacturing cost, and also uh, the general general cost here. Okay, so just let me clean this here a bit. So I have to, I have to. Uh, this is the total cost that we have. Okay. Uh, please, if you if you saw that I was uh, I, I was like. The, taking all this part no this is your general cost okay total cost is here so you have your direct cost you have your fixed cost and you have your general cost this three cost some of these three costs gives you this one the final one here okay so one two three some of these three gives you the total cost okay so please correct it uh, if i i was taking all together which is not correct right so uh, now okay uh, okay so uh, in next slide what it has done it just list you know like each of them separately so the total cost of manufacturing com cost of manufacturing is sum of direct manufacturing cost fixed manufacturing cost and general expenses that we have so if you look at the the table if you look at the table you can see that your uh, you can see that your fixed uh, your the direct cost of manufacturing can be calculated from this equation uh, cost the fixed cost of manufacturing can be calculated from this equation and general expenses from this equation all this together give you this equation cost of manufacturing all this together all these three items together that gives you this so there are uh, uh, so like what uh, what uh, what is saying here is saying that 
in uh, just one additional information that in this equation equation 6 1 the depreci depreciable allowance for of 10 percent of uh, fixed capital investment is added separately so like uh, I like he talks about this part okay the depreciation that we will usually consider to be 10 percent of the total fixed uh, fixed capital investment FCI okay that is also added in this equation and if we cons if we don't consider the depreciation okay that we show it in this way com without depreciation com without depreciation is like that so what we need to do we just need to reduce this from here if you reduce uh, 0 0.1 fci fixed capital investment what you will have you have 1.8 you have 0 0.28 you have 0. 1 this minus this gives you 0 0.18 okay so total manufacturing cost by considering the depreciation is this total manufacturing cost by con without considering the depreciation depreciation will be this equation now we have one example that we can kind of uh, work on it so we have okay Okay, we have the following uh, following cost information uh, that is obtained from a plant. Okay, so for a manufacturing site, manufacturing plant that we have, we have the following information for a design of 92 ton per year of nitric acid. Okay, 92,000. Ton, 92,000 ton per year of nitric acid. Fixed capital investment FCI is given. Wastewater treatment, cost of wastewater treatment, direct labor cost, cost of operating labor. Okay. Raw material cost, cost of raw material. Utilities, cost of cost of raw material. Utility is C util, and also fixed cost. Okay, fixed manufacturing cost is also given to you. So just let me see where we use uh, that fixed cost. Okay. Mm, 1.5 million dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. For this, for this number, for now, we will just ignore it. It's some f cost that is related to the project, but it's not defined here. I mean uh, carefully so let's let's just forget about this and see what uh, what we need to to find in this question so uh, the man okay determine the manufacturing cost in dollar per year and dollar per ton of nitric acid the percentage of manufacturing cost resulting from each cost category okay so it's very simple here is asking you to find the cost of manufacturing okay and let's say without depreciation okay so let's say without depreciation so the cost of manufacturing without depreciation will be from this equation this equation so 0 0.18 2.70 and all the other uh, cost that we have so if we look at this so the cost of manufacturing without depreciation depreciation 0 0.18 times fixed capital investment plus uh, 2.73 cost of labor operating labor plus 1.23 utility cost plus waste treatment cost you see that waste treatment is also a big issue right 
it costs you a lot you cannot just produce waste without any cost so uh, so we just put all the information here fixed capital cost FCI uh, operating costs FOC here utility waste treatment and RCM so what is this when you do that you get 14 million something this is per year all this in all this value they are they are per year right so the the cap the cost that you have per year so question is asking you to find per dollar per year that you already find is 14 something billion dollar million dollar per year but it's asking you to find per dollar per ton of nitric acid that you need to calculate so you have the amount the cost that you have per year and you know how much nitric acid you are producing per year so you just divide this value by this okay then you will have dollar per ton of nitric acid that will be something like 155 tons of nitric acid per year per, uh, the, the 155 dollar per ton of nitric acid that you are producing okay then is asking you to go find each category what is what does it mean each category it means direct fixed cost and general cost okay direct fixed and general cost so for that we will what we will use we will use each equation that you have we have for direct we have one equation for fixed we have one equation for general expense we have one equation direct fixed and general expense and you have all this information okay so here you have you need cost of manufacturing that you already calculated 14 something billion million dollar depreciation we don't consider i think here we don't yeah we don't consider the depreciation for now and yeah you have all of them and you can go find this each of this category so manufacture okay, okay the first one is this uh, direct direct manufacturing cost right so we have an equation for that that is a function of utility cost uh, is a function of uh, is a function of uh, raw material raw material and also waste treatment plus 1.33 times the labor cost operating labor COL and also 0 0.03 times the total uh, the 0 0.69 fixed capital investment and 0 0.03 cost of manufacturing so that gives you the fix the direct cost that you have the how much okay this is the direct cost that you have and you have also this is the cost of manufacturing what is the percentage of direct cost in the cost of manufacturing how much of the cost of manufacturing is direct cost you just need to direct you need to calculate this the percentage the contribution direct manufacturing cost divided by total cost of manufacturing times 100 times 100 this gives you the percentage of direct cost in cost of manufacturing and then you have fixed cost also which is a function of uh, cost of operation cost of labor fixed investment cost we don't consider depreciation here so you will get this value the percentage again is the fix is fix manufacturing cost fix manufacturing cost divided by cost of manufacturing total cost of manufacturing times times 100 right and then uh, for the general expense is also simple this cost is a function of operating cost fixed capital cost and also cost of fixed capital investment and cost of manufacturing that you will get finally two million something the general expense 
general expense divided by cost of manufacturing times 100 gives you the percentage. So it shows what's the uh, role of each of these costs in your total cost that you have. Okay. Cost of operating labor has also, there are some uh, kind of uh, methods to, uh, to calculate it. Okay, cost of operating labor, dar, okay, like uh, for the, okay, we need to know the number of operator that we need, okay, the operator labor, uh, operating labor, we need to know the number of operating lab labor that we need in the, in the factory. This is the first thing that we need to find out, how many operating labors we need. So there is a usually equation that we will use to find the, the number of operating labor then let's say the, how big is the company how big is the manufacturing how many process step you have how many let's say pumps compressor towers reactor you have how many shifts per day you have this will define the number of operating labor that you need in your factory okay so if i if i have if i take you to my let's say factory and i show you i have two two compressors three reactors three towers and i work two shifts per day and i ask you how many labor i need so you need to have an equation a reference to calculate that right so this is the equation that we will use to find the number of labors that we need per shift in 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 a company in a manufacturing site so what is uh, what is this uh, uh, what is this equation? So, in this, this is a number of operators that you need per shift. Okay, so this is P. Okay. Uh, okay, number of operating that you, operator that you need per shift. P is the particulate processing step. Okay, particulate uh, processing step. Let's say uh, it can be. I mean, like is a if you have a very specific we have two different type of process processing step we have very kind of common or uh, very popular processing steps or processing equipment we have also some particular uh, processing equipment that they need really some expert or very specific way of operating what it can be it can be let's say a fluidized bed okay which is a very particular uh, uh, fluidized uh, fluidized 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 bed reactor which is a very particular type of reactor or a crystallization okay uh, crystallization step okay crystallization uh, equipment mm -hmm. crystallization equipment so those are the equipments that are very particular and we need you know we need to consider them separately i mean in terms of the number of uh, operators that we need okay and then because like this this reactor this steps this processing equipment they need a lot of adjustment a lot of monitoring a lot of supervision right so that's why we usually need uh, more than more than let's say one two three operators to 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 uh, run them let's say for a pump or compressor they are already in the line uh, for compressor the only thing that can change is the flow rate okay that's all for the for the heater is is only only the power but some specific device equipment they really need a lot of monitoring so so particulate processing step means this type of equipment and non-particulate processing step as it can be comp compressors heating cooling mixer even separators you know like distillation column towers and also some reactors some reactors are very simple it's not like a fluidized bed reactor they can you know like operate without need of a lot of supervision now let's look at this example uh, together Okay, so uh, here we want to know how we do the calculate, how we find the number of operator uh, operating labor. 
okay number of operating labor that we need per shift let's say i have this process i will ask you how many uh, how many operation operator uh, uh, operator labor i need per shift okay how many operator uh, i need per uh, shift so you have to go use this equation you have to see how many particulate uh, steps you have and how many non-particulate steps you have all right so you have to prepare such a such a table okay you have to prepare uh, such a table so you go look at you go one by one Okay, here please uh, you have to do some correction here here we have seven okay this is seven this is seven here so what you will do you go look at your your uh, let's say system your your flow, sh flow sheet uh, pfd flow diagram and you go count the number of equipments that you have for example for heat exchanger this is one heat exchanger this is the second one uh, this is the third one uh, this is the fourth five six seven okay this is the number of uh, uh, seven heat exchanger that i have one two three four five six seven i have one heater here right so i go find the number of each of this equipment that i have and then i list it in such a table in this table so i have one compressor seven heat exchanger i have one fire to heater uh, heater i have two pumps one reactor one tower and four vessels so those are the total number but which one are particulate which one are non-particulate we don't have any kind of particulate all of them are kind of common popular and normal equipment we don't have fluidized bed or crystallization things like that so we don't have any particulate zero non-particulate so look at this here this so compressors towers reactors heater heat exchanger are considered as non-particulate okay pumps and vessels are not here you can see in this list in this list pump and vessels are not included so compressor is non-particulate heat exchanger they are heaters they are pumps they don't they are not so they, we don't count them reactors they are towers they are vessels they are not totally how many non particulate i have 11 non particle non particulate uh, processing step this is a number of non particulate then i have my equation particulate step is zero mm -hmm. non particulate is 11 non particulate step is 11 if you put this equation you will find the number of mm, then you will find the number of uh, okay then you will find this is the number of operator per shift okay this is the number of operator per shift let's say about we can run it to we can run it to something like uh, three for example okay we can run it to something like three or one, but let's keep it like that for now so the number of operator that you need per shift but let's say if we consider okay number of per each shift you need three operator right so if we consider that we have in over year okay in over year because the in each shift i have three operator right so i cannot um, use that let's say three operator is operator a b c in this shift i cannot use that operator for another shift okay i have new i need new operators i have three operators three sh let's say i have three shifts per day okay or two shifts per day so then 
I have to calculate over a year that I have let's say 12 months, 4 weeks per each month and 5 working days per each uh, per each week how many total operator I need okay per per shift so the calculation is not complicated but just look at this so we consider totally uh, we have uh, 52 weeks per year but we consider 49 working weeks working weeks per year okay and we know that we have five days per five days per week okay two two days is usually the the uh, two days is usually the weekend that we don't work so we have five days per week so each operator for works five shifts per day per per week five days or five shifts per week so totally how many shifts we need we need 240 if you multiply this we, we will we will reach to this number which is 245 shift per year per operator so each operator works this much shift each operator works this much shift per year and then how many shifts we have per year we have totally 365 days per year okay because yes you know like why why this is important because each operator okay the plant they are the plants are working 24 hours seven days per week right and the, the, the why we have to do this calculation the plants are working 24 hours seven seven days per week they are working all the time so let's say some operators they work uh, like today until friday then they are off saturday and sunday another operator he works from Sunday to Thursday and he is off Friday and Saturday so it will it will you know kind of move from one day to another one for the for different operators right so this is why the plant is working 60 uh, 365 days per per year all the days per per year and each day we have three shifts and totally we have 1095 shifts per year okay so then if you divide this number by this number you will get 4.5 operators that you need in each shift in over a year okay for that shift you need this much operator okay over a year so for our we can say let's say uh, for each member that we have in the shift team let's say today is my shift and we are 10 members over a year for each of this member we need 4.5 person or operator hopefully it's uh, you can understand it so we know that we have we need this much operate we need this much operator per each shift and for each shift uh, for each of those operators over a year we need this much this much operator so what we have to do the total operator that we need per shift is I mean over over a year per shift is this much 2.97 times 4 5 that gives you totally 13.4 that you can uh, round it to 14 okay so and we know that the average salary for example in the Gulf area is $50,000 per year okay and I need this much operator per year so totally how much salary i have to pay the, you know like we do we use this to find the cost of operator right how much money i have to pay the cost of operating labor is each labor gets this much is operator gets this much money and i need totally 14 operator uh, per year in that plant okay so i have to pay this much salary okay now okay now we are going to talk a little bit about uh, yeah so we already talked about the cost of operating labor how we how we find them now i'm going to talk a little bit about the other cost that we have that comes with the uh, with the process so 
cost of raw material utilities and waste treatment so raw material so is really related to the flow rate or uh, or uh, production rate we use uh, pft uh, process flow diagram to calculate that we know how much uh, so how much raw material we need and how much product we have raw material and product right so we we can use pft those information are available in pft process flow diagram and we use the stream factors to calculate that so the other costs let's say utility and waste treatment there are tables that can you know provide us with this kind of cost each of them they are a factor of the production um, and also there are tables, different tables that we can use like common chemicals uh, okay so it's also you know like some raw material the price of raw material that we need uh, to buy so there are tables that we can use and find them let's have a look at table 6.3 so here you can see that for example uh, each of the raw material how much it costs right let's say uh, the electric the fuels that we need the electrical things refrigeration okay this is mainly for utility actually okay not not for raw material for raw material as i said we use pft this is mainly for utility the utility that you have how much does it cost for example for air supply steam that you need you have you know like all the values per 100 standard cubic meter std is a standard cubic meter the fuse how much does it cost nowadays the natural gas the petrol the, they lost their price there is a big drop in their price so uh, we you know like those numbers have to be kind of uh, uh, kind of, it has to be uh, kind of um, adjusted and it will be actually so uh, we have all this information okay then we can find we can find you know the cost of utility by using this information that we have refrigeration and so on okay so this is also continuing uh, table uh, is the other part of table 63 thermal system waste okay for waste the waste treatment or wastewater treatment we have also um, um, we have also some factors here okay if it's hazard non-hazard if it's uh, uh, the way that we use is filtering uh, you know or uh, chemical processing any other so there is some expenses for waste treatment cost of waste treatment okay and also we have another table here which is related to uh, that give us uh, the cost of common chemical okay like as i said the raw material cost of raw material some of the common some common chemicals like very popular or common chemicals that has been uh, used uh, in many factories in many manufacturing sites cost of raw material so is uh, all um, you know like uh, acid, acetic acid acetone you know how much they they uh, they call they, they cost okay per each kilogram or per, per, per each liter cubic meter depending to their uh, phase physical phase and also it shows here like we have an additional uh, column shows uh, typical shipping Okay, like how is how they are shipped mm, okay for the okay for the shipping okay for the stream or factor as i said we use also a stream factor to kind of uh, calculate the cost of raw material okay let's say how we how we calculate this stream factors is the operating hours per year divided by total uh, total hours that we have per year 
All right. So let's say totally how many hours we have per year. We have per year. We have. Um, I think I have done the calculation here. We have let's say. 30, 36, 5 times 24. Okay. So, totally in year, total, totally, total hour in year. How many hours we have in a year? We have uh, 365 days. Okay. In a year, we have 365 days times 24. It will give us 8. Okay. Just give me one second because I need to, I need to double check this calculation. 365 times 24 yeah so if you calculate the total hour that we have in a year is 8700 8760 all right this is the total hour that we have a year so for finding the stream stream factor we need to divide the operating hours of our factory by the total hours that we have in a year okay so that is gives you about 0 0.90 so a string factor they are usually a typical a typical uh, i mean typically between 0 0.9 to 95 a typical value 0 0.92 is kind of is more used so this is my planned operating hour in the year okay so because sometimes i have emergency shutdowns some of sometimes i have maintenance you know like this is all the, the days that we consider that okay although we have all this working hour but sometimes as i said we have shutdown we have uh, emergency shutdown we have maintenance that we have to stop the plan so that's why the operating hours is usually uh, different or smaller than the total hour that we have in a year why this factor is important let's say for the raw material i tell you that i need uh, i need um, i don't know let's say i need uh, 10 uh, i need 10 kilogram of uh, 10 kilogram of acid acetic acid per 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 second okay i need I need 10 kilogram per second of acetic acid acetic acid in my plant 10 kilogram per second how much acetic acid I need in a year so I will use this factor I will convert second to to let's say year and then I will use this factor to find the the total amount of acetic acid that I need per per year operate based on operating operating hour so once I convert this to year I multiply that by let's say uh, I mean I will convert it to the year by the factors that I know each each sec, each, uh, each minute is six, 60 second each uh, each hour is 60 minutes we know that each day is 24 hour and each year is 365 days it's like that we will calculate the amount of acetic acid that we need per hour and then we multiply this by this factor to convert it to the acetic acid that we need based on the operating hour based in based on the operating hours that we have or it's not necessarily all the time uh, it's not necessarily all the time the based on kilogram or sometimes per kilomole you know sometimes we don't need per year we need it per hour per operating hour just need to multiply by this factor convert second to hour and multiply by this factor here okay so as a summary here what it has done uh, okay to calculate the cost of as a summary of this part we have almost i think 20 slides to finish this so uh, as a as a factor that we have cost of manufacturing without the depre depreciation so for for calculating cost of manufacturing we need fixed capital investment operating labor utility waste treatment and raw material that we already talked about all of them how to calculate each of them Part 3 is economic factors that influence the chemical processes. So in this part, we are going to talk a little bit about profits, you know, the 
the things that might happen uh, i mean like um, some something about marketing how much return we will get from the from the investment and uh, you know different value i mean different um, kind of we have to let's say we have to know what's the market of our product the flexibility of the market okay how big is the market those are the things that we need to investigate we need to uh, we need to know like if the are my product has this market or not right so those are uh, the things that we are going to talk a little bit here in this part of the uh, presentation so uh, economic factors project flexibility okay so like we have to check the project flexibility okay and uh, when we are doing the investment we need to know what is the project flexibility i'm gonna talk about these things a little bit in more details okay so how we evaluate the project flexibility okay we can how we can use there are usually like three types of flexibility study or flexibility evaluation uh, one of them is the market flexibility we need to know how much uh, uh, how much is the mark the flexibility of the market it, how, how the market can change it can be grow or it can you know just sh shrink okay uh, how feasible is the project for the estimated cost okay so for the estimated cost we need to do this kind of calculation so we need to compare two parameters ROR should be bigger than MARR I will tell you what is this thing you know you need you don't need to go through the details of them but just some information for you ROR is rate rate of return how much return how much return we have and MARR is a minimum acceptable minimum acceptable rate of return minimum acceptable rate of return okay rate of return should be we have to when we are uh, 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 evaluating the flexibility of project we have to make sure that rate of return will be bigger than uh, minimum rate of uh, minimum acceptable rate of return okay and also we have to make sure that project is technically feasible for the best economic alternative so if in case the product that we are producing is not popular anymore we have to be flexible technically we have to be flexible to 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 be able to to do some smart change in the project in the plant and produce something that some alternative product that is popular in the current market market flexibility feasibility or uh, studying i mean evaluating the market uh, feasibility okay what does it mean market uh, feasibility okay we have to evaluate we have to study this this time this kind of uh, this items the following items what are these items study the economic factor and indicators okay so there we have to know what's the stock market now that this days is unfortunately because of this uh, virus issues uh, the economies are not really uh, you know doing well uh, we have a big i mean lost in many uh, in many uh, i mean like uh, economical sectors banks you know manufacture manufacturing companies and so on so the factors indicators the stock markets and some other indicators that are available those are those who are expert in this kind of evaluation you know they they can provide you with a lot of information demand estimation how much of how much your product is demanded by the people by the public by the economy if you are producing fuel how much is needed now if you are producing a chemical how much is needed the supply est estimation how much you can supply okay how much is the maximum capacity your production capacity okay identification of critical 
success factors okay so you need to know what will be the critical success factors that you have in your uh, investment and then how far you are from those factors and also demand supply gap okay how much is demanded how much you can supply okay so the difference between these two gives you some idea about the market feasibility okay so economic indicators as i said the stock markets change um, okay in the you know like you, there might be a change in the demand because of you know some people let's say if the if people they have more money they buy more cars right they buy bigger cars they buy better cars if they don't have money their salary is not good so they cannot afford good cars right so all those are the, all the economic factors the average let's say salary of the people in that country the average uh, i don't know income of the people the uh, how they are uh, i mean like how is the stock market in that that country those are the things that is uh, that is needed to be uh, to be evaluated demand estimation is very important a step in uh, market feasibility study and what is demand estimation demand is you know i mean like what's the demand for your product who is the end user of your product how much money he make okay when you are producing uh, let's say um, i don't know like a twitter car you know who is your your user what are their average salary and when you are producing a bugatti you know who are your user and user and how much money they make right so this is something that uh, that we need to i mean like we need to really evaluate if you are producing a simple product let's say a uh, and uh, I, I don't know like a small uh, supplement uh, supplementary drug or i don't know uh, like a cosmetic products you know like who are the end users right right so you need to you need to know how much money they make if they can afford your product or, or not a study on, of influencing factors i mean what which type of factor will change the demand okay if people they lose their job they cannot buy cars right so regional national and export market potential how much your product is uh, is uh, popular in the region locally in the nation wise or how much is the potential to export it internationally infrastructure facilities facilitating or continuing okay so like if your uh, if uh, let's say your demand has changed are you able to uh, to uh, i mean like uh, if this demand continue to be like this or not okay this is really the kind of can be uh, can be mentioned here if your demand is uh, increasing or decreasing forecasting okay uh, forecasting predicting your demand and also uh, if the demand will continue or will stop somewhere right this is also important then uh, you see like this aside are mainly definitions they are not really uh, complicated okay so okay supply estimation okay so supply estimation i mean uh, what's your supply capacity that you can provide okay so this can information can be can be found from the past uh, past operation some past uh, information that you have and also projection for the future i mean uh, how uh, how your sub how you make sure that your supply uh, will be kind of uh, you will have a steady a steady steady supply your supply will be kind of stable it doesn't change financial feasibility is mainly because you know most of the time when we are building a, when we are building fabricating a plant we when we are fabricating a plant we really uh, don't uh, you know when we are fabric fabricating a plant uh, 
we need to do some finance you know we need to uh, sometimes we need to borrow money from the uh, from the banks we need to have some financing right so Uh, so we need to know how much money we need to borrow okay the taxes that need to be kind of uh, considered okay uh, the project okay so like how much money we need okay so the price the demand okay and the price that I mean uh, how much is your demand and how much is the price of your product it can it can kind of helps you to know how much money you can make okay from that project each year how much will be your return how much will be your sorry how much will be your return how much will be your income so you will know how much money you have and how much uh, based on your income you know how much repayment you can have if you have a loan you know like this is the maximum that you can pay per year for to to pay off your loan for example the project cost the investment cost that you you have especially at the beginning and for the operation so you can also define them when you are asking for a loan you can you have to kind of provide this estimations you have to tell to the bank or to the financial and institute that you have this you need this much money to run the project and this is the reason and those are the list of the costs that you have and also uh, the taxes you have to include all the taxes that you have the financial financial costs let's say the if you get a loan you need to pay the interest interest rates are different from bank to bank from year to year so those are the thing that you need to know and the high the high cost of envi environmental compliance or agreement uh, so uh, if you are nowadays uh, the governments like in Canada they charge companies for tax for carbon they are carbon tax based on how much CO2 you are producing your company you have to pay some tax to the government so this kind of environmental agreement or compliance can also have uh, can have a big effect on your uh, on your uh, uh, cost and financing okay critical uh, success uh, factors that we show it with CSF okay is also important factor for uh, I mean uh, for for you is important factors for the success of your uh, your project you need to identify them you need to study the risk that you have to make sure that you already you already you know far from you are you, are, you already have all this success factor for example the choice of location okay like the location of the project where the project is located is really can affect these factors okay if it's a stable region you know if it's a war zone I don't know if it's a country that is not doing well in the uh, in the in the economy in general. If the neighbors are not uh, stable, so those can can affect. Okay, then uh, the location can also define the av availability of the raw material supply. Okay, so if you are let's say in this region, we have uh, access to energy, right? The energy supply is very is not expensive we easily can transport energy to to neighbor countries either with pipelines right so we have depending to the location your raw material supply cost power cost transportation you know the, even the skilled manpower they they can also change okay so if if you are your project is far from city and uh, is in the very you know uh, area far from uh, you know development so you have to pay more to to your workers or to your laborers engineers to come there and work for you okay now uh, this is the last part of this unit okay this is the last part of uh, this unit we have I think about 20 slides to finish this uh, less than 20 17 16 slides so it's mainly again some uh, you know some additional information about uh, uh, let's say uh, 
after when you you have a pro when you you have a project and when you start the project how many years it takes that because at the beginning in the first two three years uh, you have all expense you have investment you are buying you are purchasing you are building in you know, studying testing you don't have any income your income is negative you are just spending you have outcome okay so after few years it will start to when the project start when the factory start it will start to produce to produce some product you will sell this product and once you sell product you make money okay but still you spend a lot of money it will takes a lot of time that you make money as much as money to cover whatever expense you had in the last few years right so after certain years let's say seven eight years you make uh, enough money that you can pay all your expenses all your loans all your debts and then whatever you have now is only profit okay so we are going to talk a little bit about this kind of things so we are going to talk about kind of uh, profitability so profitability uh, analysis uh, we need to uh, okay like uh, we we will go through like some definitions uh, kind of uh, we have to talk we, we will okay like in general profit profitability uh, uh, analysis like it has some item that will define it uh, first one first of all first uh, one of them is cost uh, contract for uh, difference okay contract for difference you have you have the definition here I just put it for you here so is a uh, popular form of there is, is something related to the, uh, the, the, the related to the uh, economy I mean like to the business business things uh, that I'm not really going to to detail of it but it's just uh, you know like a factor is a definition in the business depreciations that you have in your project depreciation because of the your equipment gets old uh, then uh, profitability criteria okay we have uh, non-discounted profitability and discounted profitability that we are going to talk a little bit about them then um, in profitability we usually compare large project from each other and also there is a method that we use is called cap cost for or capital cost for uh, for 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 the profitability analysis, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but uh, we're just gonna uh, I'm gonna introduce some of them, and then uh, it will be easier for you to understand. So, first uh, thing that we need to know in profitability pro profitability analysis is the cash flow diagram. Okay. Cash flow diagram is a diagram that I will show you later. Is a diagram like this. Okay, so you have time here. Okay, it shows you the time, and also it shows you the money that you spent it, or the, we call it also the cash that you spent it or you have made. So we calculate how much expenses that you have from the beginning of the process until certain year it can be let's say 15 years it can be 12 years so as you see at the beginning you have all the expenses you have investment you have to spend money this is the point that the investments is all done and now your your plant is ready to work is ready to start working so from here you start producing some product so from here you will make some money and that's why you see this curve is going up 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 and up to here your total money will be zero up to here you will produce you will make money as as much as money to pay all the expenses that you had here from here and after you have all profit okay so cash flow diagram is such a diagram shows how much money you have spent or you made in different years or by time so is the x-axis is time y-axis is the magnitude of the money okay is rep is represent your investment situation then 
as you saw both positive and negative investment are possible okay okay so for finding the sign if it is going down or going up there is different systems is used so I'm not gonna go through the detail of this and also like what you saw in the in that slide is kind of uh, is kind of a continuous cash flow diagram but most of the time we have discrete cash flow diagram that has discrete region for individual you know like expenses or investment that we are you will see some examples uh, later so here yeah, like one example of cash flow you know like what is this what is positive or negative cash flow okay so let's say for uh, you you want to buy a car that costs you twenty thousand dollar and you will you want to buy this car and you go to the bank you borrow money from the bank bank gives you this cash let's say uh, the, the total cash that you get from the bank with interest everything will be twenty thousand let's usually let's say uh, if you get total 20,000 the cash that you get from bank is about let's say 16,000 or 17,000 the rest is the interest year uh, interest rate okay you get usually 17,000 plus interest the interest that you have to pay over the four years five years whatever you have so to, you get you, ha, you you get this much cash but you have to pay this to bank okay because 3,000 is for the interest so you get to the bank the bank they calculate interest everything and you ask the bank that the, to, to determine the repayment period which is for you five years okay now uh, bank do the calculation and tells you to repay this you need to pay $400 per month okay so for bank what will happen bank will lose this much money okay at the beginning at the beginning it lose this much money but as for the next five years five times 12 months will be 60 months it each month it gets $400 right for you you get this much money at the beginning which is positive but you have to pay this in 60 months over five years okay so this is what does it mean positive negative investment okay cash flow diagram that is also uh, we usually use cumulative cash flow diagram okay cfd here is cash flow that cumulative cumulative means let's say we have uh, different expenses in different years okay so we can we for each year we the ex the money that we have the total money that we have we consider the the total uh, in expenses incomes before that year for, for example from here we consider all all expenses and in, uh, uh, expenses and income that we have before here we also also consider all the investment and uh, income and expenses that I had before that year so cumulative means that for each year we calculate all the expenses income up to that year so in this diagram you see there are different re different regions okay I'm just gonna explain a little bit about that so at the beginning you have investment investment period that will be money that the money that you make is negative money so you have to pay all the time then you reach to a point that the project is a start up and we call and you produce some product that make some money for you and we call it this point we call it self-funding point and this is this period from here to here that your total money the debt and income the total the sum of net of your money will be zero we call it payback period okay is the period up to here that you pay all the money that you spend from the income that you had from your company from selling your product you had income and you pay all the expenses you had so far and we call it breakdown point is a point that broke down and after that whatever you have is profit is positive okay we call it profit period this is the kind of definition of 
definite i mean like different parts of in the in the cash flow diagram cumulative uh, cumulative cumulative uh, cash flow diagram okay depreciation of capital investment as i said so there are a nice uh, youtube v uh, i mean there is a nice uh, link here i just uh, put for you here uh, internet link so it uh, it explain all these parameters you know in more details in uh, very uh, accu very uh, accurate uh, very accurate uh, details you know what what does it mean each of this parameter but i just give you some information i mean some uh, some information about what is the depreciable uh, of uh, depreciation of capital costs as, as i said when you put some money in your uh, when you buy equipment you buy car you buy trucks so uh, uh, is the the this equipment they get all the cars the trucks the, whatever you have they get all that they lose their money so at the beginning you have some investment you buy all this equipment and during the time during the years different years they lose their value they lose their money that that means in general the depreciation of capital investment okay so like here it just show uh, okay so this means okay like here it shows like uh, when okay the cash flow diagram has different parts negative which is all uh, expenses that you have for purchasing and installing of equipment when the plant is closed it means uh, close it means uh, here uh, it means uh, when it's a start operating actually close it means the cycle of uh, preparation is closed is a start the uh, it's a start producing so then you you will have some uh, positive cash flow okay so the the difference between these two okay so but by the way so each time um, each time that you know after each year okay after each year the equipments they get old they lose their value so we need to calculate that that how much money we lose because of you know the, the my equipments are being old or you know the, i have maintenance so those are the things i mean like we have to calculate that is called the capital depreciation okay so this is some additional information that government they usually they don't allow the company to charge full cost of the plant okay so uh, let's say when you want even you have a when you have to pay tax uh, when you have to pay tax how the tax is calculated the tax is calculated in this way income minus expense okay income minus expense this is the net income that you have from your plant you have to pay let's say 30 percent for this as a tax okay so income minus expense this will be your net income that let's say 30 percent of this net income has to be paid as a tax to the government okay income minus expense so this expense what this sentence is saying here this expense you cannot tell to your uh, you know you cannot usually uh, expense depreciation is the expense for you when you lose the price of your car or truck is the expense for you okay it's saying the sentence is saying that you cannot usually charge all this depreciation as your expense uh, when you are paying the tax when you are you know like uh, calculating your tax and another additional information in accounting depreciation is defined as the reduction of a recorded cost of a fixed asset okay so reduction of a recorded cost for a fixed asset until the value of that asset becomes zero okay so how much money you will use in that truck in that car per, per each year 
and uh, until the price of that car becomes zero let's say after 20 years the car is you know like it's not working anymore so the price is zero so how much money you will lose until it reached to zero then uh, okay we already talked about that the total mm -hmm, the total capital investment is uh, okay total capital x uh, investment okay so we we already talked about fixed capital investment fci in the previous slide we have also uh, okay fixed capital investment is the money that you put to purchase the equipment and install them pre buy the land uh, buy uh, you have to pay to the labor you have to pay to all uh, you know you have to pay the labor uh, in installation i don't know a lot of things that you need to pay to reach to the start of the project okay fixed cap we have two different capital costs fixed capital costs and working capital costs or we call it we show it with vc fixed capital costs working capital cost uh, so fixed capital cost is all the money that you have to put from the beginning until the start up of the project all the materials label everything purchase of equipment in installation everything land and administration office utility now the start of the project you need to what you need to buy you need to buy some raw material you need to bring some new so new labors you need to buy some let's say equipment for the offices uh, you know your you have new employees each employee needs you know different uh, tools to work you need new softwares you need a lot of things so those are the money that you need to put to start producing okay so fixed capital already until the startup this is after the start of the project so this gives this the sum of these two gives you the total capital investment that you need to put fixed capital investment plus working capital investment so uh, the cost okay fixed f fixed capital cost or fci we already talked about that all the costs that you have to build the plant okay that is CTM and CGR. I think we have the definition here. I, yeah, uh, CTM is the total module cost. We can calculate it from total module cost or cost of uh, grass roots plant. We already or CGR uh, grass roots uh, cost that we already talked about them in the previous slides. And uh, again, like for example, the, as I said, like most of this uh, equipment that we have they can get depreciated uh, you know most of the things that we buy we in the plant they can get depreciated and only land cannot get depreciated don't forget about that working capital the money that we need to put to start up the plant okay and we need to put to start the plan we need to buy raw material some additional and we usually put this money for the first few months of the plan and after that once the let's say first year first few months after the plant is producing some product sale will start you make some income then you don't need to put more more money and the working capital you will be also mm, will be also recovered at the end of the project okay let's say if you put some raw material you will make you will make enough money to recover that expenses if you buy uh, let's say some equipment for the office you will make enough profit to to recover that so and working capital is usually between 15 to 20 percent of fixed capital investment working capital is about 15 to 20% of fixed capital investments okay now in this slide uh, he's going to talk a little bit about different type of depression that we have I'm gonna stop uh, this video here we have only 13 12 uh, maybe 12 13 uh, slide and then uh, I will upload another video from a slide uh, 42 
and until the end which is only as I said 10-12 slide thank you for watching